Hello, my name is Marta Bortoletto from Brescia, Italy. Although we cannot meet in person this year, uh, I'm glad we can still meet online and I want to thank the organizers for that. Today I'm going to talk about the first of a series of studies we are conducting aiming at um, defining measures of conduction delay of the corpus callosum by means of TMS evoked potentials. And in this, studies, in this study, we have focused on the motor system. The conduction delay is basically the time that it takes for information to travel from one area to another along white matter tracts, like the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is actually the major tract that connects the two hemispheres and it has a crucial role in uh, regulating the exchange of information between them. The downside is that the corpus callosum has a long, a long conduction delay, which means that it's a, it's a slow connection compared to intrahemispheric connections. For this reason, it has been suggested that the long transcallosal conduction delay might be a factor that led to hemispheric dominance throughout evolution. Uh, basically, a more segregated information processing might have evolved to avoid multiple passes of information across the corpus callosum. However, um, still the hemispheres need to some exchange of information, so we should still be able to, to see an effect of transcallosal conduction delay on behavioral performance, mainly when tasks require high timing accuracy. Uh, the main problem here is that currently we don't have a very good measure of transcallosal conduction delay. There have been pioneering studies using lateralized effects of reaction times and event related potentials, like in the Puffenberger paradigm, but these measures do not really, uh, do not really provide a, a measure related to a specific tract. Other studies have used TMS uh, and they have given a good estimate of conduction, transcallosal conduction delay. However, these measures still rely on peripheral output and they are limited to the motor system. They cannot be extended to other areas of the brain. Therefore, we thought to use the TMS EG co-registration approach and specifically the TMS evoked potential. With this kind of technique, when we stimulate with TMS, we can activate a target region at a specific time. And after this activation, uh, it is possible to record through EEG the secondary neural responses that have been generated to the connected areas. For example, an homologous areas that are, is connected to the target one via the corpus callosum. And this, we have tested this technique on the motor system, but the good thing is that uh, if uh, we can validate this technique, we can extend it to other areas and to other systems in the brain. In the motor system, we know that the corpus callosum mediates interhemispheric inhibition with a transcallosal conduction delay of about 10-20 milliseconds. As it has been shown, for example, in ipsilateral silent period paradigms. In this kind of task, the participant is required to activate their muscles ipsilateral to the TMS. When the TMS pulse is given, it is possible to record a temporary reduction in muscle activation. And this phenomenon is thought to be related to signal transmission through the corpus callosum, which inhibit the contralateral primary motor cortex. And eventually this inhibition travels along the corticospinal tract, reaching the muscle. 
In this kind of paradigm, if we add EEG electrodes on the, cord, um, well, on the scalp, we can imagine to be able to record this response in the control lateral primary motor cortex uh, by means of TMS EG co-registration. So here is our paradigm. We, we recorded TMS EG uh, during the ipsilateral and the ipsilateral silent period in the muscle during four conditions of an ipsilateral silent period paradigm. In these four conditions, we stimulated uh, either the left uh, primary motor cortex or the right primary motor cortex. In the not as condition, participants were required to just um, activate the ipsilateral muscle and be relaxed with the contralateral muscle. In the task condition, we, the participants still activated the ipsilateral muscle, but they were also performing finger tapping with the contralateral hand because this has been shown to increase the interhemispheric inter inhibition. Uh, we, also, we also added uh, DTI measures of the body of the corpus callosum, which is the part of the corpus callosum that connects the two primary motor cortices. And here you can see our TMS EG data. We were able to record nice uh, TMS evoked potentials in all four conditions, but we were specifically uh, interested in an early component occurring perhaps around between 10 and 30 milliseconds. We were looking for a component possibly in the contralateral hemisphere, the hemisphere contralateral to the stimulation, and possibly uh, with a positive um, potential. That's because positive potentials are associated with inhibition in the motor system. And uh, as you can see, we actually found this component that we called P15 because the peak was uh, around 15 milliseconds as latency uh, and it was contralateral to the stimulation and positive. And we were able to record it in all four conditions of our task. First, we tested if the P15 uh, is a measure of interhemispheric inhibition. For this, we applied linear mix models uh, uh, with P15 as a predictor of ESP amplitude. And here you can see that we found a positive relationship uh, so that the higher the amplitude of the P15, the higher the ipsilateral silent period area. Um, suggesting that the P15 um, is a measure of interhemispheric inhibition. A, our second aim was to uh, find the relationship with the corpus callosum and more specifically to see if the P15 latency can be a measure of transcallosal conduction delay. For this, we applied linear mix model uh, with uh, DTI measures uh, as predictors, uh, so the microstructural integrity of the corpus callosum is predictor, and the P15 latency uh, as a dependent variable. And we found a, an in, a significant relationship with the axial diffusivity and the P15 latency. Importantly, the axial diffusivity is the diffusivity of the water molecules uh, along the axons of the corpus callosum, which means that the, the easier the molecules can travel along the corpus callosum here, so the, ease, the easier the, the signal can pass uh, through the corpus callosum, uh, the shorter is the P15 latency. So with these two evidence, we thought that we can 
sustain that the P15 is a measure of transcalosal inhibition and its latency is a measure of the conduction delay. Therefore, we use the P15 latency to test the impact of transcalosal conduction delay on behavior. And in this case, we ask participants to perform an in-phase bimanual sequence of finger position movements and we measure the interhand interval, which is the time difference between the taps with the, with the two hands. Um, well, specifically, a better bimanual coordination is reflected in a smaller interhand interval because it means that the tapping is more simultaneous. So our hypothesis was that a short transcalosal conduction delay would lead to a, a short, a, a lower interhand interval. We tested this relationship separately for the left and for the right M1 stimulation. And as you can see here, on the X axis, there is the P15 latency while on the on the y-axis, there is an interhand interval. If we look at the relationship uh, of the P15, when we stimulate the left M1, we can see that there is a positive relationship. So that the, the, um, the shorter the conduction delay, the better behavioral performance. On the other side, also, the conduction delay from the right M1 uh, has an impact on behavioral performance, but this is in the opposite direction. So that the, the lower the conduction delay, uh, the worse the performance. And uh, if we, if we, um, uh, if we, create an index with the rate between left and right, uh, this, this rate is actually the best predictor of behavioral performance. So to some extent, these data are in line with current theories on transcalosal conduction delay because they do show that um, in some cases, um, a shorter conduction delay is optimal and it affects, uh, it improves behavior. But on the other side, we also found this quite surprising uh, effect that a long conduction delay can be, um, a short conduction delay can be detrimental for performance. So um, our data basically sustain that in some cases, a temporal advantage of one hemisphere, uh, of the information from one hemisphere to the other might be actually more beneficial than uh, a general um, faster signal transfer between the hemispheres. To summarize, we have evidence the TMS EG can provide a measure of conduction delay of callosal fibers. We also found evidence that the transcalosal conduction delay can impact behavior in a task that requires high timing accuracy. Finally, we found that asymmetry of conduction delay was uh, um, a predictor of better performance, uh, specifically, the asymmetry was uh, that the signal from the dominant hemisphere had a temporal advantage over the signal from the non-dominant hemisphere. And this might, uh, well, we can speculate that this temporal advantage uh, is beneficial for the dominant hemisphere to have a better control during the manual coordination. And that's the end. I would just want to thank all the uh, all my collaborators who are working with me on these projects. And uh, I want to thank you for your attention. <laughs>